It's an interesting story we have here this morning. The woman who anoints Jesus' feet at the party of a Pharisee, right? There's so many holes in this story, we kind of have to guess to what happened. And this is actually a story that happens in each of the four Gospels. However, I don't want to say that the four stories are the same. Because they're not. There's just too many differences in what happens in the other Gospel stories and what happens this morning And there's way too many holes in this story. Like, for instance, how does this woman even get into the house of the Pharisee? Wouldn't there be security or something, really? I mean, not security, but the Pharisee would probably have slaves who would be, you know, taking care of the affairs of the house. And if some strange woman tries to come into the house, they're probably going to stop her. So how did she get in? And then there's this whole thing of she was standing behind him and washing his feet. How does that work? I mean, really, let's think about that for a moment. Actually, it's really easy when you think about it. I'm not going to try it because I don't know if I get up after doing the bellin yesterday. But in Jesus' day, were tables like they are now? If you remember the first part of the reading, it says, and they were reclining at the table. When they sat down to eat in Jesus' day, they didn't sit in chairs like this and pull up to the table. They actually sat on mats on the floor. The table would have only been about this high. So Jesus is probably laying on a side, right, with his feet down. So she's behind him, washing his feet. Does that make sense? So... How did she get in the house? How did she know Jesus was going to be there? And why is she doing what she was doing? This story is scandalous, not only from the point of the fact that this woman is a sinner. And why is she a sinner? We don't know, right, we don't know. But we assume, right, every time we read this, that she was a sinner in the Gospels, what do we assume? She's a prostitute. This woman may or may not be a prostitute, we don't know. So we're not going to conjecture that she was a prostitute. She was a sinner. Maybe she stole grapes from the market without paying for them. Maybe she didn't, you know, pay all of the fees she needed to pay when she went to certain places. I mean... Whatever it is, she's a sinner. Whatever it is, she's doing wrong. She's there with Jesus. She's crying. She's touching his feet. And she's put her hair down. Now, does that mean anything to anybody? This is yes. This is no. See, in our days, we don't really take that much about that. We read the story and it's like, okay, she was washing his feet. She was crying on him, drying him with her hair. In Jesus' day, a woman would never be at a table with men if she wasn't invited. Again, this is Jesus' day. (laughs) A woman would never be at a table with men unless she was invited, and she wasn't invited. A woman would never put her hair down in the presence of men that she did not know and was not her husband or was not her father. You would never touch the feet of another person that you were not intimate with. That alone, regardless of the fact that this woman is a sinner, makes this story scandalous. Because here she is in the house of a Pharisee doing things that no person should ever be doing at all. And why? Why is she there? With her alabaster jar of ointment, which probably cost more than she ever made in a year or two years time. Crying over Jesus' feet and drying them with her hair. What has caused her to do this? Just the simple fact that she learned that Jesus was there. Is it just the simple fact that she learned that Jesus was there and that's why she's there doing it? Right? She learned that Jesus was going to be at the house and she came. And Jesus says, 
that henceforth her, her love has forgiven her, right? It says something like that in there. That she has been here doing this ever since I came into your house. This woman has done for me what you have not done for me. And henceforth her sh- has shown great love. Therefore I tell you her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Have been forgiven. Not her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Her sins, which are many, have been. What's the difference between are and have been? Tense. Her sins have been forgiven. So, another hole in the story. How did she get into the house? What is her sins? Three, the hole in the story is... Did she see Jesus before? Has she met Jesus on the street before and and he forgave her of her sins then? And she's been moved with so much love and, and sheer compassion for this man, for him forgiving her of everything that she's done up to this point, that she's moved beyond anything else to go and get this jar of ointment and to go and find him wherever he's at and to express her gratitude and her love for what he's done for her. Could be. Doesn't say for sure. But her sins have been forgiven and she's moved to do something. And the punchline of the story here is, is great to me, too, because Jesus tells Simon, this Pharisee, this story, right? There's a man who has two debtors. One owes him 50 denarii and the other 500. And he forgives both of their sins. Which do you suppose would love him more? Or which do you think would love him more? And Simon says, well, I suppose the guy that owed him more money is going to love him more than the guy that owed him less money. I suppose, really? If you owe somebody $500 and they say, you don't have to pay me. What what are you going to think? Well, you know, I'm going to go out and buy him a really nice bottle of something to pay him back. Because it's much cheaper than the $500 I was going to owe him. Right? I suppose the person that owed him more. And who here owes more? The woman? Or Simon? You see, the thing that Jesus says, and it goes right back to what we talked about last week. It's about seeing. Jesus saw the woman at Nain, bearing her only son, and he saw her need. And that's what Jesus says today to Simon. Did you catch that? The story starts, Simon invited him, Jesus came, they ate, there was a woman who came, washed his feet in the ointment, washed him with her tears, dried him with her hair. And Jesus said, there's two people that owe this guy a debt and they canceled it. Who is the greater one that's going to love him? You have judged rightly, he says to Simon. And he says, do you see this woman? Because Simon actually saw her because he said earlier to himself, right? If Jesus knew who she was, he wouldn't be letting her touch his feet. But did she actually, did he actually see her or did he see her reputation? Do you see this woman? And then it's interesting, it doesn't end with the story. It goes on to chapter 8, which tells us what? There were many women along with those 12 disciples who walked around with Jesus and they supported him through their resources. So there were some women who had some resources and they were walking around with Jesus, going on his travels with him, and they were supporting him. Because we don't see everything that's happening around us. And you see the biggest thing about this story is all of us are sinners. Simon, the woman, each and every one of us. And just like I showed the kids this morning, our sins have been wiped away. When we come to God and we say that we've done wrong and we're sorry for it, he takes it all away and makes us pure and white, simply the way that he created us to be. And each and every one of us owe that debt of scandalous love to Jesus. So why are we not? At his feet, washing them with alabaster ointment, crying over them with our tears and drying them with our hair. Well, I'm not drying them with my hair because I don't have enough. But you get the point, right? 
You've been forgiven just the same as that woman who was a sinner has been forgiven. And what have you done about it? See, Jesus loved us with a love that is beyond all reaches and all expectations. He loved us even when we despised Him, even when we turn away from Him. He's still there waiting for us to turn around, to grab us in His arms and to hold us tight to Him and to say that I love you and I'm glad you've come home. He's forgiven us of everything that we've done wrong. That's the biggest scandal that we could ever have. So what is keeping us from being moved with compassion to lay down at the feet of our Savior and to wash them and to tell everyone out there how much He's loved us. So know, my friends, that you have been forgiven, that God loves you beyond all measure. So go into the world and show everyone just exactly how much God loves you and God loves them.